Good day and welcome to the Fugro third quarter trading update 2018 at <coughs> investor call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Today's conference is being recorded, and Mark Heine, Fugro CEO, and Paul Verhagen, CFO, will start today's call with a short statement, after which there will be time for questions. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Katrien van Bettinga Wichers. Please go ahead. Good morning. Thank you. Um, welcome to this conference call, third quarter trading update published this morning. Uh, as said, I am here with Mark Heine, our CEO, and Paul Verhaag, our CFO. Um, Mark and Paul will give a short summary of the trading update, and after that there will be ample time for you to ask questions. Mark, I'd like to hand over to you now. Okay. Thank you, Katrien. And also from me, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm pleased to report a third consecutive quarter of top-line growth. Uh, this growth is driven by the ongoing expansion in the offshore wind developments, uh, as well as the recovery of the global offshore oil and gas market. And due to favorable infrastructure markets in most of the countries we operate in, we also realized a good uh, revenue growth in our land division. We generated a close to mid-single digit EBIT margin, which represents an improvement compared to the same period last year. This was driven by strong performance of the marine site characterization business. In these early cyclical businesses activities, we are experiencing sharp growth and improving prices. This was, however, partly offset by ongoing challenging conditions in the marine asset integrity market, which is still oversupplied. Now we'll get back to the backlog, outlook, and the capital markets day a little bit later in this call. Next slide, please. After three years of continuous declines, it's obviously key to see that our revenue has been growing again since the start of the year. Quarter three, 29% growth, very comparable to the high growth of the previous quarter. And as you can see in the graph on the right, the year-to-date growth was primarily driven by the marine division. However, also in land and the geoscience division, we reported higher revenues. Next slide, please. So let's have a look at some of the divisional highlights now. In the marine division, overall vessel utilization, and this is owned and long-term lease charters, improved to 76%. In addition, an increasing number of spot charters was required to cover the high seasonal workload. The divisional margin increased to mid-single digit. As a result of strongly improved revenues, prices, and therefore results in the marine site characterization business line. The margin of the late cyclical marine asset integrity business line was down. This market is unfortunately still oversupplied, leading to a continued challenging pricing environment. In the land division, the growth was much higher than the previous quarters. EBIT margin was also here, mid-single digit, and slightly better than the same period last year, and also up from the first half of this year. Finally, the geoscience division, which is almost our fully, um, uh, uh, consists of our 60% uh, our stake in CBA geosolutions, there we see that due to delayed start of projects, and this is not delayed because of us, but because of clients, only one crew was active during the part of the quarter. Activity levels will pick up shortly, with two additional crews expected to start operations during the fourth quarter. The low activity level in the third quarter resulted in an EBIT loss. Paul will present the next slide, um, which will deal with our financial position. Over to you, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, so uh, on the financial position, uh, first uh, important point, uh, cash flow uh, from operating activities after investments are uh, close to zero. Uh, you might recall that uh, year-to-date first half we were at minus 44 million, and also that we uh, guide, of course, for uh, positive for the year, depending on uh, working capital uh, development and revenue development. This revenue is standing 91. Um, as you're all aware, our target is around 90, so we are pleased with this performance, although 
it increased slightly from Q2, where we were at 88 days. Um, it improved strongly compared to where we were last year at this moment in time, when we had 101 days uh, DRO. Uh, working capital, 15%, higher than what you're used to. Again, I explained it in Q2. This is on the back of 29% uh, yeah, growth in the quarter. If you would take the, um, the percentage of yeah, four times Q2 revenues, the annualized revenue, we would be at 13.7%, which, of course, is much better than the 15%. And uh, net debt EBDA uh, stable, unchanged compared to um, the end of Q2. So uh, back, to, uh, back to you, Mark. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, let's have a look at the backlog now. Uh, at the marine division, backlog uh, for the next 12 months increased by 13.7%. Uh, this increase was obviously very strong in site characterization. Uh, for instance, due to the high activities, geophysical activities, in particular Americas and Europe. For land, the, the uh, increase was, uh, or it was a decrease of 3.8%, which was much lower than the, uh, uh, the decreases in the previous quarters. And this is caused by a diminishing effect of uh, finalizing several large projects, as we have reported before. The land asset integrity backlog increased by 7.6%, in particularly driven by the Americas. And last but not least, CBA Geo Solutions. The backlog there increased by 22.8%. The pipeline of potential projects is solid confirming an anticipated 2019 market growth. And please note that this backlog does not yet contain the significant 3D ocean bottom note survey uh, of the Red Sea that we announced earlier this week. This so-called S79 contract is scheduled to commence early 2019. And before uh, I move into uh, or onto the uh, outlook, it might be good to explain why our current revenue growth is higher than the 12-month backlog growth. First and foremost, it's good to understand that the next quarter revenue growth, uh, for the next quarter revenue growth, the three-month backlog growth is most important and not the 12-month backlog. For example, at the end of the second quarter this year, the three-month backlog growth was significantly higher than the 12-month backlog growth but still well below, below the realized revenue growth. And that has two main reasons. The actual call of work on the frame, existing framework agreements can be higher than anticipated in the backlog. And additionally, spot work revenue awarded and executed in the quarter will not be visible in the quarterly backlog. Next slide, please. So let's have a look at the outlook of 2018. In short, the outlook across the market is positive. Offshore wind developments continue to grow, and the oil and gas market is gradually recovering. In the building and infrastructure market, we also expect continued growth, driven by a strong global economy, population growth, and rapid urbanization. For the full year 2018, we expect a marginally positive EBIT margin. We also anticipate to generate a positive cash flow from operating activities after investments. And this is, however, dependent on revenue growth and related to working capital requirements at year-end. CapEx is still expected to be around 80 million euro. In general, we can say we remain strongly committed uh, to generate positive cash flow by focusing on margin and price improvement, cost control, and strict working capital management. Next slide, please. And before we go over to the questions, just a brief reminder of our upcoming Capital Markets Day. During the past couple of months, we have been working on our strategy update, and we will present the results on the 14th of November. On this day, we will address both the required improvements of our performance, uh, as well as our mid- to longer-term strategy. And with that, I would like to close out uh, this presentation. I would like to thank you very much for joining and your attention and hand over to the operator to address your questions. Thank you, sir. If you would like to ask a question at this time, please press the star or asterisk key followed by the digit 1 on your telephone. 
please ensure that the mute function on your telephone is switched off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. And if you find that your question has already been answered, you may remove yourself from the queue by pressing star 2. Again, please press star 1 to ask a question, and we will pause for just a moment to allow everyone to signal. We now move on to our first question, and this comes from Martin Dendriver from NIBC. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, to start off with uh, marine, and more specifically, site characterization, can you elaborate a little bit on what the utilization was for the, 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 the fleet? You've given it for the overall fleet, so including asset integrity. But can you talk a little bit about um, utilization specifically for site characterization? Okay, uh, uh, Martin, Martin uh, bedankt for the, uh, thank you for the question, sorry. <laughs> um, and um, we, we don't uh, um, uh, issue specific details on, uh, on, on the business lines, uh, on the utilization there. Um, what, what, we can, what we can state, and, and, and that is something that you can uh, probably also uh, uh, figure out yourself, is that uh, site characterization is, is busy, and we're growing uh, rapidly there. So uh, uh, the uh, utilization there is, uh, is good. OK. Um, I'll, I'll try it uh, in a different manner. Um, when you talk about a pri better pricing environment, uh, can you elaborate a li little bit on what, does, what that means? Is that plus 5%, is that plus 10%, plus 20%? And then uh, related to that, obviously, this all ties into profitability. Uh, I was wondering, if you, if you show 70% growth uh, after 40% in, in, in H1, um, and you look at the EBIT margin development, that is so, somewhat disappointing. So what, where, where do we stand on the pricing relative to previous periods? And can you elaborate, elaborate a little bit on why the improvement in the EBIT margin was relatively low, given your high revenue growth? Yeah, OK. Um Basically, what we have to uh, understand is, uh, and I need to uh, emphasize that uh, uh, maybe enough there, is that um, while we see the, um, the sharp growth and improved improve pricing uh, and profitability in the early cyclical business, obviously, we, we still have a, a, a much tougher environment uh, and oversupplied market in the asset integrity uh, business. So, so that uh, puts uh, still uh, pressure on the pricing uh, there. Uh, if we particularly focus on the early cyclical uh, marine site characterization business, we see uh, pricing uh, moving up uh, because it's uh, more busy in all the regions, uh, so across the globe. Uh, and then uh, prices, uh, you can have uh, indications of 5 to 10% uh, uh, that we see uh, moving up uh, almost everywhere. Uh, so that is uh, something that, uh, that we, can, uh, we can state there. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe we're that. trying to, to, build, to build on what Mark said, but what is also important to understand is, uh, which I think we also mentioned last time, is that for site characterization, um, of course, we see strong growth in offshore wind as well in, uh, in oil and gas uh, starting to come back, and they're competing for the same assets. So the demand for these assets, of course, is pretty, pretty high now and, and gets much more in balance, and as a result, of course, pricing environment starts to... Uh, to change, and you see that back in the, in the results of, uh, of our site characterization business, Mark already uh, said. But the fact that, that both markets compete for the same assets, of course, is, is a positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that uh, additional remark. Um, then with regards to geoscience, um, you, you, know, you specify in almost all cases uh, low single digit, high single digit, mid single digit, but what was the EBIT loss of geoscience, please? Yeah, we have not we have not expressed that in digits because the revenue is very low, uh, so the digits would scare everybody uh, like crazy. While the amount is not very uh, very uh, impressive, so no, the revenue is very low. Uh, as as Mark already said, projects were uh, postponed, starting dates of uh, projects. Last year we had zero revenue. This year we had somewhat high revenue, but still uh, very low due to delayed projects. So a, a margin here would make no sense. That's why we didn't say it. So should I take into account an, an OPEX level of around 10, 10, 12, 13 million, so a loss of around 3 million? Is that, is that a reasonable assumption? 
Yeah, of course, I'm not going to say that, but yeah, you you can take something into account uh, that uh, that uh, that makes sense, and indeed, it's not it's not a huge uh, number, so um, okay, I hope this is sufficient, uh, Martijn. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, then moving on to land, um, unfortunately, a similar question. I was wondering if you uh, if you show organic growth of eight eight point four percent, and then only a marginal EBIT margin improvement. Can you elaborate on why that? operational leverage didn't kick in there? Yeah, so on land, I think it's important to state, and maybe Paul wants to jump in at some point in time, is that we're obviously pleased with uh, with also the revenue growth there. Um, and I can say and add to that is that we're not overall, we're not satisfied with the uh, with the performance yet. Uh, this will, uh, will, will need to further improve. Uh, and how we're going to do that, uh, we also will address during our capital market day. Um, so, so this is uh, this is something I can uh, already say. Um, and there we see uh, also a difference between uh, asset integrity and uh, and site characterization. I think that is important to mention. Um, and site characterization is is the is the bulk of the activities that we have in in this division. Uh, asset integrity uh, is uh, is relatively small. Uh, and there uh, we see uh, a lower margin. Yeah, no, it's okay. not, not, not to, to add to that. Uh, it's uh, side characterization improved, which, which is positive. As integrity uh, showed to decline a year on year. Uh, you should note, of course, that as integrity is relatively small compared to the much larger uh, land side characterization business. Uh, the good news is that the backlog uh, for as integrity starts to grow again, as, as Mark already uh, showed. 7.6%, um, but basically the plus in, in site characterization was uh, was offset by um, a decline in uh, in asset integrity. Okay, no further questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will move on to our next question from Luke Van Beek from the Groof Petrocam. Please go ahead. Yes, good morning. Well, first of all, a question on asset integrity, where you obviously point to the challenging market environment, but at the same time, uh, revenues in the backlog uh, have been growing for some time now. Do you have any visibility on, on when a turning point could be reached uh, there? Uh, we, 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 we don't uh, speculate uh, or want to speculate on that. Uh, I can only say that this is, uh, this is a difficult uh, market environment still. Um, I think the uh, the whole market is behaving, uh, I would say, according to the book, uh, where you see the early cyclical uh, uh, business uh, coming back uh, uh, nicely and quickly. Uh, it's also going uh, uh, very quick uh, right now on the site characterization uh, side. Uh, when that exactly kicks in uh, is 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 probably dependent also a little bit on uh, on what market uh, segment you're focusing on. Certain uh, construction and installation work uh, can start faster than uh, than other uh, in other areas. Um, uh, then, obviously, you have the ongoing uh, inspection, repair, and maintenance projects that are still uh, still uh, ongoing uh, for uh, for most of these fields. Nevertheless, uh, with no installation and uh, and and development ongoing, uh, you can imagine that uh, that uh, everybody's competing uh, for uh, for these uh, IRM uh, projects as well. So that put, puts, uh, in general, pressure on uh, on the pricing environment, uh, which uh, which I think is uh, is uh, very logical and uh, and easy to understand, uh, despite the fact that we all want to see uh, a turnaround as fast as we can. Okay. And on the other hand, if you look at site characterization, there the, the revenue growth has been uh, very strong over the last uh, quarters. Uh, at what point will you need more capex to uh, accommodate further growth? Yeah. Thank you for that question. Uh, in principle, uh, we have guided for uh, for our capex uh, for the for uh, for the whole year uh, to be around uh, 80 million euros. Um, if we particularly look uh, at uh, site characterization, uh, we have uh, our own fleet uh, plus uh, uh, several uh, long-term lease contracts. Uh, we can serve uh, 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 quite a, a large chunk of uh, of our activities with that. Uh, the market is uh, in our favor to uh, to uh, to uh, hire in uh, spot charters. Uh, so we believe that uh, that with uh, short-term uh, lease contracts we can uh, we can actually uh, complement uh, our own uh, fleet. Uh, so that doesn't uh, require uh, a very high capex. 
uh, and then also what we will present uh, moving forward uh, that we have a slightly different view of uh, how we can uh, uh, tackle this market moving forward and we'll present that to you during the Capital Markets Day uh, and uh, we'll come back on that. Okay, thank you. And then my final question is on the uh, working capital. Obviously, you point to higher working capital in relation to the uh, rising revenue levels, but is it just a matter of higher revenues with similar capital, um, working capital efficiency, or is it also more difficult to maintain that efficiency in the current market environment? Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, it's, I mean, the, 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 to, to manage the DRO around 90 is, is definitely a challenge, and I've said and repeated it every quarter. We come from far. We, a few years ago when we started our working capital improvement uh, uh, project um, or initiative, um, we were close to 120 days. In this environment for the last uh, years, it has been very challenging to, to reach this uh, uh, around 90 days. Most quarters we have succeeded. It still is difficult, um, but uh, I see no reason why we should uh, should not be able to uh, to continue to achieve this. Noting again that there could be quarters where we might not achieve it, uh, like last year Q3, we were at 101 uh, days. Uh, the high percentage is purely uh, because it's a percentage of four quarters rolling revenue, and yeah, you can just do the math. Uh, working capital is determined by the last quarter uh, of revenue. Uh, and if you then take uh, four quarters uh, rolling revenue, where especially Q1 of this year and Q4 of last year, of course, were significantly lower than Q2 of, of sorry, Q3 of this year, you get this, uh, now, what I say, inflated percentage. If we would have four quarters the same revenue as Q3, uh, look, we would have been at 13.7%. Okay, that's clear. So Thank it's, you. Uh, it's, uh, it's still, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the performance. It's uh, very much in line with what we, uh, what we target, and I hope that we can get it there. And, of course, we will always try to do it better, but we also have to be realistic that that is a challenge in this, uh, in this market. Okay. Thank you. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you, ask, if you wish to ask a question at this time, please press star 1. We now move on to our next question from Thais Garkelder from ABN AMRO. Please go ahead. Hey, good morning. Thanks. Uh, first question, uh, you're stating that cash flow from operating activities after investments was close to zero. Close to zero means that a, a, a small positive or a small minus. Small, small minus, uh, Thijs. A small minus. Um, yeah. Further, you're indicating working capital increased to 15% from, I think it was 14.6 uh, previous quarter. Negative impact is in the quarter from working capital some uh, 8 million or so. Not gonna, I'm not going to say something on the amount, but what I can say is that uh, a day of, of, of revenue in this uh, quarter is close to 5 million euro uh, yeah, of, uh, of uh, receivables. We increased by three days from 88 to, uh, to 91 days. So okay. based on that, uh, you could say based on the receivable development that that uh, would have increased uh, by 15 million. Of course, we also have payables uh, in, our, in our working capital. But this is an indication of what you should think of. Clear. Uh, then on CAPEX, uh, 80 million is, is maintained. Uh, does it mean that this quarter you roughly spent, let's say, a quarterly of the, of, of the 80 million, so around 20 million, or was it clearly higher? Yeah, we only guide for, for the year, uh, uh, Thijs, which, which, as Mark already said, I think two times or so is, is 80 million. But what is the problem in, in indicating what, what the hard numbers are for this quarter? No, no problem. We just didn't do it. <laughs> it yeah. It's a trading update. So we, as you know, we, we, we have a trading update. We don't want to put too much emphasis on the quality trading updates. It's limited information. It's literally a trading update. It's not full financials. There's no problem, but this is our policy, and this is how we've always done it. And for now, we'll continue to do it, uh, Thijs. Yeah. Okay, then, then, then you only give a net debt 
hebben die je een level of two and a half times based on, on the covenants calculation. Uh, well, looking at the, 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 the cash flow minus capex being, being a, a negative, so a net debt in absolute terms has gone up further, I presume, from 502 million to something like uh, 510 million or so. Uh, yeah, so sorry, guys, but this is the same answer. I mean, it's a trading update. We don't give specific net debt uh, figures, um, but indeed with a slightly negative uh, cash flow or close to zero cash flow, yes, uh, of course, it's logical to assume that net debt would go up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Okay, the, uh, there may be questions you can answer uh, for me. Uh, the project uh, in the Red Sea, uh, can you explain how, how payment schedules look like for, for these kind of projects? Are you being prepaid or, or not? Sorry, what, what do you mean by prepaid? Well, that, that the client makes a prepayment and that you start to work. Or uh, do you first have to, uh, let's say, uh, reach your milestone uh, in terms of doing work for for the project and, and then build the customer uh, and wait indeed for that uh, 90 days and then get the payment? Yeah, no, it's a combination of everything we just said. So there will be indeed uh, uh, a payment for mobilization uh, cost at the moment when that happens. And then, based on certain milestones, indeed, we will uh, we will bill uh, the customer and, and get paid. Okay. But no, no prepayment. Just to be very explicit uh, um, on your question. Yeah. That then uh, uh, clearly that project hasn't been in your backlog uh, so far. But what That's about correct. the the Qatar gas contract announced yesterday? Was that already included in in the marine backlog in in the previous quarter? When when did it enter your backlog? Yes, correct. Uh, it's it's part of our uh, our backlog. Uh, 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 it has come in uh, uh, a couple of months ago, but uh, officially uh, we have now started to work. And it is included uh, in in the uh, in the backlog. But it came in maybe, in the maybe. backlog in Q3. Yes, correct. Okay. Maybe just to to give a little bit further clarification, we've said this before. As you know, the Figaro backlog has a awarded part and a let's say probable part. So based on the probable part, this the Qatar gas was was in. Uh, for CBET, we only do awarded because of the lumpiness of these awards. Either you have it or you don't have it, so we don't want to start working with probabilities, which we do with uh, yeah, all the other projects that we have in, uh, in marine and land. So therefore, you see a different uh, uh, way of working for uh, seabed uh, compared to what we do in, uh, in marine and land. And then okay. still, maybe good to add, the probable part is, is uh, included on a weighted, uh, yes. a weighted uh, yeah. uh, food. scale. Weighted? In what way? Well, if, if there's a high probability, uh, there's obviously uh, more uh, more taking into the black backlog than uh, than uh, if the probability is uh, is somewhat lower. If it's below a certain figure, uh, uh, then it's not included in the backlog at all. Okay, clear. And, and what was the percentage firm in the backlog uh, at the end of Q3? Let me check. That typically we all are going to. Going to check right now. Don't know it by okay. heart, but I will give you that number. Um, uh, percentage is. Uh, we come back to you, uh, Thijs. I can okay. really see it. Okay. Uh, then a question on, on, on being very strict on your on your financing uh, to manage the balance sheet uh, as well as on the capex side as, as on the working capital side. Isn't this a market 
where you better can have uh, more room to maneuver in terms of financing? Is it not that you're missing contracts because you are not prepared to pre-finance your customers in, uh, at this point where others maybe are willing to pre-finance their customers? Well, I think we can be very clear on that, uh, Thijs. Uh, uh, we, we don't see any restriction at the moment in, uh, in uh, working for any customer. Uh, we are uh, well positioned, uh, we believe, uh, to take on any work uh, uh, in, in the whole portfolio of services. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I don't recognize uh, uh, that being an issue. Okay. Clear. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the percentage, the percentage in the hand. Sorry, uh, um, is this is this percentage? Yeah, the percentage in the hand, which is very similar to previous, 67 percent of the backlog that we uh, uh, shown or reported. Thank you. Cut off all that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Can we move on now to our next question? That comes from. Kian Mulder from ING, please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, uh, everyone. A couple of questions from my side. Um, you mentioned in the marine asset integrity, Brazil and the Europe, as let me say that there were somewhat disappointing developments there. Can you maybe uh, elaborate on that, especially with regard to Brazil? And also give me, an out give me some outlook on 2019. Whether you see a further decline of the number of contracts with the uh, Petrobras in this, uh, this respect. And my second question is about, um, about the delay of uh, Bucios. Um, is it still the case that you don't expect to uh, recover any, uh, any of the delay um, by, uh, by one, of the, uh, one of the suppliers or, uh, or for, the, for the delay? Or by, uh, by Petrobras? And the third question is, uh, was in the third quarter uh, any contribution from finer exploration visible? That were my questions. Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, Quirin. I will answer the question on Brazil and on Finder, and then uh, hand over for Buzios uh, to Paul because he's uh, very involved in that. Uh, for, for first, uh, first on Brazil, um, the marine asset integrity business. Um, uh, what we have seen uh, there, at the moment we have an ongoing contract on our own vessel, uh, the Fugro Aquarius, as you know, um, which is ongoing, uh, and, um, the, and, and will continue till uh, mid next year, uh, if I'm 100% correct, I think May next year. Uh, and then we have five uh, tripartite agreements in place right now. Uh, however, the mix of those, uh, those agreements uh, have changed somewhat. So uh, we used to have uh, a dive support vessel, the Kellyanne, um, and uh, that has now um, stopped that contract uh, somewhere in May, I thought, also this year, uh, mid-year. Uh, and then the Far Swift is also a vessel uh, a tripartite agreement that we had uh, going, uh, also uh, has changed. Um, so what we have ongoing right now are uh, a number of, uh, of new uh, uh, tripartite agreements. And the activity levels on those agreements uh, are a little bit lower than, uh, than the ones I just described uh, that, that are, um, are basically uh, completed. So, uh, and they all will continue uh, 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 for the uh, upcoming year or at least a, a great part of next year. Um, so in that sense, um, uh, similar activity levels uh, can be expected. Uh, with maybe uh, a little bit of up and down uh, between some of the vessels, depending on the activity uh, that, uh, that uh, Petrobras will call out uh, uh, there. The, um, but we, we are feeling that uh, 2019 will be uh, very similar there, um, or certainly to the uh, second half uh, that we have uh, seen now in 2018. Um, and then going over to Finder, can be very clear, uh, no contribution uh, in, in this quarter or in, in the third quarter this year uh, from Finder yet. And then for Buzios, uh, I hand over to, uh, to Paul there. Yeah, uh, no, Buzios, uh, Kurein, um, no, we have not been able to get any compensation for uh, the delay. Uh, obviously, we've tried, um, but not successful. Uh, we do expect uh, to start uh, uh, very soon. 
that is confirmed. So at least uh, that's a little bit of good news is that we will start uh, somewhere in the coming uh, one or two weeks. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, have not been able to get any compensation from um, from our customer. Is it from uh, customer? with regard to Finder? Is it is it correct to expect some some contribution in the fourth quarter then? Um, on Finder, uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna again. I'm not gonna say anything on the, on on on, on the, uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, a number of things have uh, uh, happened in uh, in Finder. Um, we might get some income in uh, in Q4. Still uh, uh, somewhat uncertain, uh, but yeah, I don't want to be too uh, too specific because I simply cannot be too specific. Uh, but okay, some, thank you. Some, some, thank some positive cash inflow might might happen in uh, in Q4. Small. Thank you, Kvirain. Thank you. And we will now move on to our next question, which comes from Andre Mulder from Kepler. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Um, two questions. Um, first question, um, your guidance uh, for uh, revenue growth. Um, I assume that's based on the reported uh, revenue. Uh, secondly, um, on, uh, on, on, on the um, the development uh, that you see for net debt EBITDA, so a decline in, uh, in, in Q4. Um, Q4 is always a difficult quarter, so can you give us a feel about the metrics that you use uh, for your assumption? Okay, uh, so your first question uh, is uh, the, the outlook is based on, uh, on the comparable uh, revenue. So. Uh, um, um, so that's just, just to confirm that, and uh, or, or not, not uh, uh, yeah. So based on the comparable uh, revenue, and uh, the decline for uh, or uh, the quarter four uh, activity, uh, I think uh, what we see uh, for uh, for the backlog obviously uh, still a, a a good growth uh, for also for uh, for the next uh, uh, period to come. Um, nevertheless, uh, you're 100% right that we're now moving into a a. Uh, a period, uh, quarter four and also quarter one, where there's more seasonality in the business. Uh, so in some areas in the world, uh, we, we will be affected by, uh, by weather and by, uh, by lower activities. Uh, so, uh, so you're absolutely right that, uh, that there will be a difference compared to uh, quarter two and quarter three. But any, any further insight on, on your, your CapEx plans or working capital uh, requirements in that quarter? Uh, typical working capital, of course, will, will come down. Uh, Q4 is a seasonal lower quarter than uh, Q2 and uh, Q3. We've seen it also last year very clearly, so we see always uh, um, an increase compared to year-end uh, uh, and, and, and hence uh, an unfavorable cash flow development uh, in the first two quarters of the year because the second quarter revenue is typically higher than, uh, than the fourth quarter. And that typically will reverse uh, towards year-end. Um, as I said already in the beginning, uh, we had minus 44 million free cash flow uh, year-to-date uh, June. We have now close to zero, so you can do the math if we guide that we expect to be uh, marginally positive. However, that is dependent on revenue growth and uh, and working capital. Uh, but that's at least an indication of what you could uh, could expect. Okay, then uh, back to the uh, to the answer on uh, on on the guidance. Um, if if you're based on uh, comparable revenue growth, um, you already have something like 15% uh, underlying growth in the pocket. Uh, looking at uh, Q4, uh, the backlog is uh, is up uh, 8%. Why not uh, give a bit more detail on your on your guidance than than simply saying uh, revenue growth? Well, that's uh, uh, probably coming back to the same answer that Paul gave before. That's that's uh, what we uh, haven't done and uh, uh, what we have decided uh, to uh, to stick to. Uh, we give the guidance as uh, as presented in the press release, and uh, I think uh, mo most of the sums uh, can be made uh, uh, by you uh, to get to uh, reasonable assumptions. Yeah, thanks. And, and as Mark also said already before, uh, Andre, I mean, Q4 is always uncertain. So we believe that we, we always try to be 
realistically conservative, let me put it that way. Ultimately, we cannot predict weather. Um, so it could be worse, it could be better. So also there, we're always a little bit careful for, for Q4, and, and that's why we don't want to go too specific. Uh, uh, but of course, given where we are here today, we have a revenue, that there will be revenue growth for the full year, that's pretty uh, pretty obvious. Yeah, I would say looking at the, the development in the, in the first nine months, even if you uh, face uh, bad weather, um, you should still be comfortably over 10%. So in that respect, the margin uh, compared to a conservative statement is quite large. Oh, it is true. We, we could have been more specific. We've chosen not to, not to do that. But, uh, yeah, this is very comfortable indeed to say that we will have uh, revenue growth for the full year. You're totally right, uh, André. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on now to our next question and follow up from Thijs Berkelder from ABN AMRO. Please go ahead. Yeah, Thijs again here. Uh, follow up, uh, following up on Andre's uh, questions on, on, on revenue growth or expected revenue growth. Uh, looking at backlog numbers for, for, for the next uh, 12 months and stripping that for the, for the next three months, uh, seems to signal for uh, the marine division 8% revenue growth for, for 2019 and for land still a revenue decline. Uh, uh, I find that difficult to combine with the statement that you see uh, real prices going up in, in site characterization and that you expect uh, a further rise in utilization levels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Can you maybe give us more uh, scope there? Well, I have uh, noted down the numbers that you calculated, so uh, I will keep them uh, next to uh, the uh, to uh, the actuals uh, next quarter. So um, um, and and compare them. Uh, nevertheless, um, I think you, you're talking about marine side characterization because that's where we uh, where we're stating that the prices are uh, are changing and moving up uh, but you're mixing it up with land so I'm, I'm just trying to find out uh, what, what you're uh, what you're asking because uh, the land division has been growing on the, on on the side characterization side as well but uh, as we have said before uh, we still have uh, had uh, a number of large contracts uh, that uh, that are uh, completed uh, which uh, which obviously has an effect on on, on the revenue uh, in total for uh, 2018 that effect is uh, is, is is diminishing um, so in that sense uh, uh, moving forward uh, uh, we can say that uh, uh, this uh, this will be replaced by other uh, maybe also smaller projects uh, large projects don't come along uh, every every uh, uh, every time, so uh, so uh, uh, we basically pick them up uh, when when they are uh, available to us. So uh, so there is a difference uh, um, moving through uh, the period. Uh, sometimes you have a few, sometimes you don't. So that uh, that varies uh, um, uh, or basically results in a uh, in a changing revenue over time. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe to to, to add to that, uh, Thijs, um the, the, you see that in the in the press release that the the backlog for um, for uh, marine side characterization grows uh, 30 percent. Um, so the, the the total for marine is lower, of course, than marine side characterization. That's an important point. And two, as you know, uh, most of our backlog uh, is for the coming six months of revenue. And of course, it goes uh, for certain projects uh, beyond the six months, but the bulk is uh, is up to six months. We're now building up backlog for the lower season, Q4 uh, of this year and Q1. Uh, so this is also a trend that you should take into account. Of course, when we move into, uh, uh, let's say, the beginning of next year, we start to build backlog again for the higher season, which is uh, Q2 and uh, Q3. Uh, so also that effect you should uh, you should try to take into account. Uh, maybe, okay. maybe good to add there, uh, uh, Paul, maybe a bit, bit more color there. Uh, obviously, when you move into the uh, the off season, um, uh, the workload in some areas uh, uh, where we have seasonality uh, uh, will drop because uh, clients obviously concentrate uh, uh, work around uh, the good weather periods, and that means that uh, that there is uh, there's more capacity available in uh, in these uh, yeah, uh, off season uh, uh, months. 
and that means that uh, that obviously uh, also you, uh, your your pricing environment is different in those uh, those months. So uh, I think that uh, that is also uh, complementing basically what pa Paul uh, was saying. Clear. Any progress on on getting the Klansas uh, being exchanged in euros, Paul? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, so far, every year we've managed to uh, to uh, to uh, yeah, export a few million uh, dollars uh, equivalent uh, out out of Angola into uh, into Europe. Um, we still saw further declining Kwanzaas uh, uh, measured in euros uh, in in the third quarter, uh, five million in total. Uh, the remaining balance is 25 million euro. Uh, we're working on it, but uh, uh, we are unfortunately in the same boat as many uh, other companies that try this. Uh, it's still very difficult. Obviously, the environment should get better uh, as they get more money based on higher oil prices, but uh, as per today, it's still very, very challenging. Okay, and then maybe a final question, uh, but some, t let's say, following these years where you've done a lot of their investments, I'm not completely sure whether you still are on the contract. You signed a big contract with Shell early 2014, a five-year contract. Is, is that still your contract, and, and will it be renewed, or, or, or is, is that progress uh, process ongoing, or how should we look at it? Yeah, okay. okay. You're referring probably to uh, the contract in Malaysia, um, a five-year yeah. contract that we had uh, going on. Um, so that that contract is uh, is, um, is 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 not uh, not complete. Uh, uh, well, it's basically not completed, uh, but it also has changed. So uh, so basically, uh, Shell is is approaching that in a different way. Uh, that means that uh, the, the amount of call-off that we uh, will see uh, on this contract. Uh, we expect uh, not to be uh, that large moving forward. Okay, clear. Thanks. Thank you. I will move on to another follow-up question. This one comes from Andre Mulder from Kepler. Please go ahead. Yeah, one, one last question on uh, um, uh, the land asset integrity operations. Um, if you look at that operation, excluding the, the, the volatility of seabed, it's, it's the smallest in sales, uh, but incurs the largest losses, possibly the most competitive part of uh, Fugro. To what extent is that a standalone activity? Uh, you refer to the land asset integrity business? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the, I think it's good to mention that the land asset integrity business is a business that has uh, transformed uh, over the last couple of years a lot. So uh, you cannot compare it with uh, what we were doing uh, uh, years ago. Uh, so uh, some of this, uh, uh, this business that we're doing right now is, uh, is uh, relatively uh, uh, um, advanced technology-wise and new uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, our customers. So uh, in that sense, uh, you could say that uh, some elements uh, are maybe even in, uh, in, a, in a starting up uh, phase or a restart phase uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get traction. Uh, we are actually quite pleased with uh, with what we achieve in uh, in that area, uh, despite the fact that I have to be very clear that the performance is uh, still uh, below uh, our uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, desire, so to say. Uh, that needs to further improve, uh, but we do uh, have the feeling that uh, that this is moving in the right direction. Um, is, is it a standalone activity? Is it under the umbrella of uh, site characterization, or it's completely loose? No, no. That's the, sorry. I I, uh, um, I had to answer that one as well. Yeah. Um, no, it's not a standalone business because, uh, um, and I, I think we will come back on that in, on our capital market today as well. Uh, none of our businesses uh, are standalone. We believe that everything we do is connected uh, uh, to each other. Uh, site characterization to asset integrity, and it can complement each other. Even the land and the marine business is uh, is related to each other. So what we see right now uh, on 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 the asset the land asset integrity uh, uh, business is that we have uh, uh, already uh, quite some experience uh, in in several uh, technical uh, uh, solutions that we are now rolling out into the marine division. So we see the benefit of uh, of what we do 
on, on, on the land asset integrity side uh, being applied uh, elsewhere in the business. And, and that is actually uh, uh, exactly how we saw it a couple of years ago when we did uh, uh, transform that business. Uh, it's actually turning out to be uh, exactly as we expected, uh, uh, very supportive to the remainder of the business or the other elements of the business. Okay, thanks. Thank you. At this moment, there are no further questions. I would like to hand over to Mark Heine for any closing remarks. Please go ahead. Well, thank you very, very much uh, for, uh, for joining uh, uh, this uh, analyst call. Uh, it was my first analyst call, and um, uh, um, I thank you for all the questions, uh, and I wish you a very good day. That will conclude today's conference call. Thank you for your participation, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect.